This is the lecture video on chapter 5 covering thermochemistry. When we think of the word thermo, we typically think of either heat or energy. When we think of the word chemistry, we think of atoms and molecules and things like that. So this chapter is going to be about energy and heat in chemistry. This is an outline of the material that we will be covering in Chapter 5. There will first be a brief introduction, followed by some energy basics. In this section, we're going to learn some terms, things we're going to need to know before we start talking about thermochemistry, heat and energy of chemical reactions. Then we'll talk about calorimetry, enthalpy, and Hess's law. Thermochemistry is the study of energy changes that occur during chemical reactions or physical changes in chemical compounds. I have two examples represented here. Photosynthesis, which is a big one, and we've talked about this in the past briefly. Photosynthesis converts radiant energy, so we put energy in, in the form of photons from the sun. It literally takes CO2 and water combines them in a chemical reaction to form glucose and some oxygen. So we need energy in. In addition to those photons or light from the sun, there's also some thermal energy in the form of heat that we need too because we could not run these processes at minus 273 degrees Celsius, we do have to have some energy in the form of heat in order for these reactions to occur. A second example is aerobic respiration, which takes place in the mitochondria of all of our cells. So what respiratory metabolism is, is actually the controlled breaking of bonds. We're going to take now glucose, which the plants made. We're going to combine it with oxygen. We're going to form CO2, which we actually breathe out. We're going to form some water, and we're going to form some energy. Now, this energy is actually in a, several different forms. One is actually heat energy, because we actually maintain our bodies at around 98.6, and that's where that heat comes from. But not all that energy gets converted to heat. Some of it actually gets stored in different forms so that we can use it later. On this slide, I got two more examples of thermochemistry and the transfer or the creation of energy. The first example is a combustion reaction, burning things. In this case, I'm specifically looking at the combustion of butane gas. So I have C4H10, which is butane, that reacts with oxygen in the atmosphere to produce CO2 and water. And we get some energy out. In the case of the example over here, most of that energy is actually in the form of heat. We're using that heat energy to actually caramelize, to brown, the top of these creme brulee. But I can also see that I see light coming out here because when we burn things, we typically use that energy either for heat to heat things or for light to light things up like in a torch. The fourth and last example here is actually a transfer of heat process where I'm using the heat from one source, in the case of this case here, it's a heat gun, to actually melt ice. So I'm starting off with solid water. I'm putting some energy into that system to create liquid water. So in these four examples that we've gone through here, there is energy either being consumed or released, and there's several different forms of energy. Let's now take a look at sort of the five standard forms of energy that we typically talk about. This slide lists the five most common forms of energy. Thermal energy, which we typically associate with heat. Radiant energy, which we typically associate with light as, for example, from the sun. 
electrical energy, which we use to power a lot of our motors and devices these days, nuclear energy, and finally, chemical energy. The two we talk about most in this class are chemical energy and thermal energy. And that's where this chapter starts now. Let's take a look at some energy basics now in the next section.